Good morning, uh, good afternoon, sorry, and welcome to our webinar today where we're talking about ransomware and recovery from ransomware. Uh, and we're working with a key partner of ours, Rubrik. So my name is Matt Compton. I head up the data management team at Bytes and I'm joined by David at Rubrik. So today's webinar is, is all about ransomware, but the recovery side of things. So at Bytes, we're very fortunate where we work with a number of organizations across a number of different verticals in a number of different regions. But one thing is common is that cyber is only on the increase. The attacks are becoming more targeted and there's many different threats in, 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 the, in the market, especially since kind of COVID has uh, impacted our, our, our worlds. Um, we have a dedicated security division um, where we uh, enable our customers to put and use the, the best, and the most recent and innovative software and service to make sure that um, all the layers of perimeter security are, are in place to, to try to stop these targeted threats um, coming into your, into your organizations. However, um, as the cyber criminals become more advanced, as do the threats, and inevitably there will be times when your uh, perimeters will get broken down and these ransomware or other and target effects that will get into the environment. And in that instance, you need to have a plan B. You need to have a, the confidence that you can recover in those instances and you have the tools in place that if you are hit by a ransomware, you are encrypted and someone's asking you to pay a ransom, you have a plan B and you're able to recover back. And that's what today's webinar is all about. It's using the rubric technology to help you understand what's available in the market to provide a true immutable backup. Um, once we kind of pass over to David and David goes through the content, um, as I said, we'll come back on the end of this and I will uh, host a quick Q&A with any questions that are asked. And we're also doing something a little bit different today. We've got a, uh, a Ring Smart doorbell to give away, um, which is great. So what we will be doing is uh, during the webinar, um, one of my colleagues in the marketing team will be pulling names out of a hat. And at the end, when we come on to Q&A session, we'll draw that hat out and I'll announce the name. Um, and one of you will be the lucky winner of a Ring Snot doorbell. And that's the latest version too. So um, yeah, stay tuned. And I will be announcing that at the end when I come back online. So with that, I just wanted to kind of set the scene as to why we put today's webinar and what you can expect of it. I'm gonna now hand over to David, who's gonna go through the core content. And I'll look forward to speaking to you again um, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the webinar. So David, I'm gonna go on mute and hand over to you. Great, thanks Matt. Really appreciate the uh, warm introduction and the opportunity to present uh, to everybody today. Thanks for tuning in. Again, my name is Dave Siles. I'm the uh, global field CTO for Rubrik uh, based here in the States. Uh, my contact information's on the screen. If you have questions after this presentation, obviously please leverage the Q&A functionality or we will be sending this presentation out and um, you can contact uh, by to our local team uh, for follow-up. Uh, but a quick introduction to Rubrik. For those of you who may have not heard of before, uh, Rubrik, we are a data management platform company. Uh, we brought to the market six years ago a revolutionary way of looking at backup modernization. Uh, we do this through an API-first approach that gives customers the ability to take advantage of our modern SLA policy-based driven protection for protecting assets both on-premise all the way through the cloud. But on top of that, through our Polaris data management platform, we've built a series of rich applications. We're gonna talk about one of those today, and that's our cyber resiliency product radar. But we also have a data governance offering uh, that we released earlier this year uh, called Sonar, all built on top of the backup data that we have under management. In the marketplace, we've been the number one data management platform for the last few years running. You know, we've done this through a simplicity of really eliminating the idea of concept of backup jobs. Again, we take a radically simplified approach with one declarative policy that enables fast backup, data protection and recovery and a very low cost TCO. But we also do this through an immutable backup platform that gives a layer of security and resiliency that doesn't exist in the marketplace really with any other platform. All driven by automation with global visibility through a single pane of glass it gives our customers the ability to really understand, manage, and forecast their backup environment uh, through radically simplified operations. Additionally, we've built a rich series of applications on top of this platform. Again, one of them being Sonar, and Sonar is our data governance and data classification product 
It gives our customers the ability to have introspection and data discovery of their sensitive information anywhere it lives inside of the backup architecture, helping customers mitigate their risk and really get global visibility to manage that across compliance. And then lastly, radar, what we're gonna focus on today is there to help customers understand and detect when there's malicious activity or suspect activity that happens in their backups, giving you that deep introspection to understand what was impacted when and where, and then giving you the ability to leverage recovery using our resiliency platform, which is based on the immutable backups. And we've won a lot of accolades in the industry. We are in the leading quadrant with Gartner this year, and we've been recognized for what we do in the ransomware remediation detection space on top of what we've done from scalability and data, digital transformation of databases and backup recovery. Well, let's focus on our topic today, which is ransomware. I wanna give everybody a little bit of primer on where the current landscape is ransomware, what's happening in the industry, and then we'll go through how Rubrik is applying our solution to this problem. You know, it's obviously a pandemic in a pandemic. It'll be over a billion uh, pound uh, industry this year in terms of impact globally, and that's ransom paid the total impact of remediation costs is well into the tens of billions of dollars. And when customers ask me why do people pay ransom still today, it really falls into three different areas. The first is downtime. You know, it takes the average customer over seven days, according to Forrester, to get back to recovery of a steady state operation. And sometimes today, because ransomware has evolved, it understands how to target legacy backup platforms, taking them out of the equation as well and making it completely impossible to actually recover. And lastly, there is the impact of being able to have visibility into the actual scope of the damage. Doing a differential analysis of what was actually changed, impacted, or encrypted, sometimes is very time consuming or not even possible. And that time to business operation is more critical to pay the ransoms the customers still do. Now it's a real problem, you know, it's, it's expensive, it's getting real expensive and gets worse by the day. All you have to do is open a newspaper and there's a new article or some story today that'll be on the front headlines about the latest attack victim of a ransomware attack. And it doesn't discriminate, it cuts across all the different verticals around the world. And obviously as we sit here dealing with COVID, you know, the real-time changing landscape has actually impacted even how ransomware is working today. You know, as companies, employees have adapted to working remotely, attackers are understanding this and they're targeting the users at home now. These users at home have rich connections back to the corporate office using VPNs and that layer at the edge is not necessarily protected as much as it was when it was inside the corporate four walls. State, local governments, you know, education, healthcare are seeing a substantial mark increase of attacks, well over 300% over the previous year. And ransomware is being leveraged to must at the management of the entire uh, pandemic. You see a lot of these current schemes are leveraging messaging that customers would leverage uh, if they were using legitimate messaging around COVID-19. Another popular way to get their phishing attacks to be successful. Now ransomware is not new. It's really been around a long time. The very first version of ransomware was back in the 1980s with PC AIDS. It was very self-contained, but it was the very first version of ransomware that took uh, data under hostage. But most people didn't start becoming aware of ransomware until the early 2000s. And it was really just kind of that initial wave of, of annoyance ransomware. It was often typically defeated through local defenses like antivirus, you know, spam filters, and firewall, and even some basic user training. And as we got into the early 2010s, you know, the second wave really kind of came into fruition. Things like crypto wall and crypto locker came out of the market space. You know, the evolution of protection had to evolve as well. This is where next generation antivirus, strategic backups, and sometimes even you know, having to do manual recoveries were required. Oftentimes though the encryption was still localized enough that recovery keys and unlock keys could still be maintained. But as we got into this kind of third wave in the middle of the 2010s, you know, the WannaCry's and the servers and Lockywares of the world came into play. More sophisticated distributed encryption leveraging command and control architecture. You know, the evolution is still how to protect, how to involve. You know, endpoint detection and response became key, network-based backups and recovery. Unfortunately, we started to see the wave of paying ransom starting to take off here. And that's when the criminal enterprises really realized that this was a legitimate business, that they felt they could legitimate business for them that they can make money in. And as we sit here today, we're really in this critical phase. You know, the attacks have become very uh, sophisticated. Some of them are nation-state sponsored. 
Unfortunately, they also attack beyond just the core edge. They understand taking out backups, and so you need to have immutable backups as an absolute key defense. Yeah, you have to be able to leverage things like artificial intelligence and machine learning power discovery to really try to stay ahead of the cat and mouse game. You need to have an incident response plan. You have to be able to exercise that. And unfortunately, customers are now taking out ransomware insurance for that day when they still have to pay the ransom and making sure that they have those funds available as the premiums and the payments for the ransom will continue to increase. Now, ransomware really breaks down into three different types of families. You know, the first one that's most prevalent that most people know about is encryption-based ransomware. This is a typical attack that most people understand. It attacks the personal files and folders and high-value content documents. Often, once they've been impacted, they will encrypt these files and, and show a lock screen on your, on your computer, uh, telling you that your data has been taken hostage and giving you very clear instructions on how to procure Bitcoin how to contact them for customer service, and they do provide great customer service, to get your data back. And they often will put a time window on that. If your data is not paid, ransom's not paid in that period of time, your data is gone forever. The second class is not as prevalent anymore as it used to be, but lock screen ransomware is still a thing. And you know, it's typically more of a nuisance than it is an actual encryption attack. Oftentimes it just takes over the system screen and allows them to let you log in until you've been presented with the opportunity to pay to remove it. Oftentimes, these still can be easily defeated with safe mode and antivirus recovery tools, but there's still a few prevalent versions of this. And then the third category would be hardware-based lockerware. You know, this is the low-level attack that goes at the master boot records and firmware uh, code on hard drives and, and, and self-encrypting drives. Oftentimes, when you've been attacked with this type of an attack, you don't know until the system's been rebooted. And when you do have been, uh, been, been, it's been activated, that reboot, um, will demand the ransom you paid. Oftentimes you need a physical system state backup and oftentimes new hardware to recover from this type of attack. So let me walk you through kind of the anatomy of an attack so you understand the typical pattern of what happens. You know, most attacks will start with some form of campaign and that campaign is a social engineering attack or a weaponized website where the whole purpose is to trick users and the downloading essentially a helper application that will actually stage the infection. Now the infection itself is not actually the ransomware. It's the staging applications that are needed to help get the ransomware on the system, compile it and get it embedded. Oftentimes these things are like a moat, uh, lasagna, um, different uh, trick box type of uh, code um, that are prevalent in the industry, but are often used as kind of a helper uh, hacking tool. Now once it's been staged on the system, the ransomware will get set up, it'll encrypt itself, and then get it, it, it persisted across the system. And then once it's been persisted in this stage, it'll often live there dormant now for 30, 60, 90 days, sometimes even longer. The whole purpose is to make sure that, that infestation is in the backup systems and into the backup copies. During this whole process, while they're doing it, there's, there's a phase of scanning and enumeration that'll happen where the ransomware not actually encrypting the data is looking for the targets it wants to attack trying to get additional credentials to understand how to log into different systems and get the largest attack surface possible. Once all this intelligence has been gathered, then the attackers will make the decision when to kick out the actual encryption attack. And that encryption activity will happen and with those, the files that were discovered and the systems that were analyzed will be encrypted. And this is typically done pretty fast. And once that is done, obviously they present you with the demand for the payday. Again, this entire life cycle used to take hours before now it can take long periods of time. It can be staged and broken apart when stages one through three, one through four uh, in months in advance, and then the encryption and uh, demand for ransom will happen a month later. Now granted, all the technology in the world's great, but you still have to train you know, the human firewall. Uh, the humans are always gonna be the weakest link uh, in any security defense. So if you're not fishing your own employees and training them with the security awareness programs, you need to start today because it's honestly your best defense because you're only as strong as your weakest link. Now, if you've been attacked, you need to have a good recovery plan and a way to uh, understand how you're gonna respond. And really it starts with understanding have you been attacked with ransomware. You know, the symptoms are typically pretty straightforward. And the cyber criminals want you to understand that you've been impacted. Uh, oftentimes your users will start making uh, help desk tickets and awareness that they can't open certain files and they're receiving errors that files are corrupt or the file's name has changed and the extensions have changed. Oftentimes you'll have the presence of a help file or a decryption text file 
on your desktop and pop up. Um, also, you will see the screen notification that always often happens with that browser pop up or that helper application demanding the ransom be paid and telling you how to decrypt your files. Really, if you've been down to this perspective, you understand you've been hit with a ransomware attack, you have to start the mitigation response plan. It all starts by getting the di disconnected from the network, the infected workstations. You know, not only just the network cable, but think about things that also can communicate the protocols, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC. You really need to get everything off the network and eliminate patient zero. Then you need to determine the scope of the infection, right? You gotta understand where those files were impacted. Were they on the local systems only? Were they on map drives? Did they get out to the shared network? Any network attached storage you have? Even cloud repositories kind of come in the scope. There are things to do to help you identify the type of ransomware that did impact you. Obviously, we're gonna share this presentation with you after the fact, but there are a few websites here on the screen. ID Ransomware is one of them where you can upload samples of your ransom note and certain files that were encrypted. It'll help you identify what family and what strain of ransomware you were hit with give you some intelligence on whether or not they will help you uh, find a crypto decrypted key if there is a, a good chance of paying the ransom and getting your data back or the intelligence that's available will be made there. Virus total obviously the open malware database as well as another place you can let it, or leveraging intelligence around what may have impacted you. And the bleeping computer form there is really where the world's largest uh, malware antivirus hunters live. Um, it's always a great place to help if you can't identify maybe you got hit with a new variant or a zero day type of attack and you need some really um, cutting edge assistance, it's a great place to look. Now, if you've detected that you've been a ransomware and you obviously are down to determining how you're gonna recover, there's a few options on best to worst options to recover. The best option obviously is if you have your data protected in an immutable backup, just leverage that and recover back. If that's not possible, then obviously go through and looking at some of those websites I just mentioned above to see if there's a decryption tool available to help you get your data back. Some customers make the decision to not pay. You know, if the data was not valuable enough to the business or the value of it is minimal enough that you could afford to lose it, refuse to pay is a valid option. If you're in the perspective of where you're gonna to have to pay, obviously get a, a, a risk negotiator involved and a, a cyber risk advisor and help them understand uh, who you've been impacted by and let them help negotiate uh, on paying the ransom. Now, granted, you always want to prevent this before it happens. You know, so one of the things you need to have in your kit is a prevention attack plan. Um, something you obviously want to do before the attack, but if you're doing this after the attack, still you have to prepare one for the next time around. So implement a prevention program. Again, start with great employee customer education. Um, and you have to simulate testing, right? A plan on paper is no good if you're not fire drilling it. Again, make sure you have backups that are immutable, that are air gapped and protected. And then leverage things like artificial intelligence and machine learning to help you detect and, and uh, accelerate response when you do have an impacted event and continuously exercise this plan. If you're looking for a framework, you can obviously leverage our uh, framework kit that we make available at Rubrik that you can download from our website. Now I'd like to walk you through how Rubrik is helping customers address this problem with our backups, with our value-added solution of Polaris Radar. Now, radar is not a prevention tool. So radar is never going to stop a ransomware attack from happening, but it is going to be there to be the end of the line defense. If you've been impacted with a ransomware attack and they made it all the way through your physical endpoint or endpoint detection, even your antivirus and your malware, and it still got into your data set, we're going to be there to tell you that it did happen and help you understand that and help you drive recovery. We're also going to help detect the anomalous user behavior of rogue employees. So if you're in this situation, we're gonna help you accelerate that recovery. And really that's what you'd be down to. Again, built upon immutable backups, you know, they're an absolute must proper defense against ransomware. And when we talk about immutable backups, in our architecture, unlike traditional legacy backup applications that run on top of storage-based commodity systems that are just as discoverable through production network when a ransomware attack's coming in, they leverage certain protocols like SMB and NFS for the disk-to-disk -disk backup targets and run on things, again, like open file systems. So when that encryption attack comes into the play, they can be discovered, attacked, and encrypted. Now, when Rubrik's deployed in the environment, Rubrik's system has been designed so that it's immutable by its, by its natural design. So data written into it can never be modified. The other thing is the Atlas Data Vault, where we write our data inside the Rubrik appliance, is never directly connected to any network. So it's not discoverable, monitorable, or changeable from that surface area. When you bring those two things together, we give you a very resilient, protected copy of data that allows us to do 
protection of your systems and give you still the ability to have instant flexible recovery. And really what we accelerate radar is that manual recovery process. So if you had a situation without radar in place, you'd have to identify what the anomaly was. Was it internal or external action that caused the impact? And then do that diagnostic impact analysis where you're bringing on multiple different backup points in time or different snapshots and scanning for the differential to see exactly what was intacted, impacted, encrypted, or attacked. And then because, before some customers come to Rubrik, they actually have to go through and so oftentimes rebuild their backup architecture, pull tapes from Iron Mountain, reinstall backup applications and infrastructure to be able to try to do the recovery. And this entire life cycle can often take days to weeks. So at Rubrik, we accelerate this in a very simplified way. Once data is under management by Rubrik, after every backup, we take and build a metadata index file that we send up to our machine learning powered cloud in Polaris that's got a pre-trained model that looks for anomalous behavior. This is all done programmatically. There's nothing you install. It's just a license that gets turned on on top of the Rubrik platform. If we see any kind of suspect activity, we automatically generate that clear impact assessment and give our customers clear visibility into what applications and files were impacted when and where. But then we close loop it for you. We also connect back to the last known good version of all those files that were impacted and help you drive one click steady state recovery the previous known period in time. Your good data stays, is the impact the data is recovered and you're back to operational steady state. Now this is all powered through machine learning. That machine learning is done through a rich classification model that we've built based on heuristics. There's two different pipelines involved here. The first one's all based on file system heuristic analysis. So we look at the behavior analysis of how files are changed, what files were changed over time, the frequency and the modification of them. All that's weighted in the model that's been pre-trained to look for anomalous behavior. The second pipeline is all based on content awareness. So we're looking at things like entropathy, magic byte modifications, permission changes, mind type mismatch, all the kind of heuristic setting training that happens with a ransomware attack. And again, because we're using heuristics, we have the ability to catch zero day and polymorphs based ransomware attacks. As long as they're encryption based driven, we will catch that with this model. Now here it is in action. So if we got an alert from radar, we'd be able to come into our dashboard, which is part of our player's GPS platform and see that radar has been licensed and turned on here. But clicking into that, I have the ability to drive into the why I have that alert on the system and quickly understand that the system was flagged because it had anomalous activity with high confidence level and also had high levels of entropy or encryption detected. With the power of radar is I can peel back the layer of the onion and actually see into the file systems, all the way down the directory structure to the actual files that were modified, deleted, or encrypted, and see exactly what was impacted. And again, we allow our customers to close loop this recovery by taking them back to the previous point in time, whether that's an out of band recovery, an in band recovery, or recovery to a net new location. Any way you choose to do it, it's all self service and driven through this one click recovery framework. And today, Radar works on any of the file content rich locations that we protect on the Rubrik platform. So things like virtual machines and file shares and file sets, um, all the AIX and Solaris systems, Windows, Linux systems all the file content rich locations, again, that we can protect, radar can be applied to. And we've got numerous success stories around the world in different verticals where customers have leveraged the value of Rubrik, protecting their data with immutable backup, but then accelerating recovery with radar to not have to ever pay a ransom. One of those is the city of Durham, North Carolina. Earlier this year, they were impacted with a very sophisticated nation state based attack. We were able to help them recover 100% without ever paying any ransom. In the late last year, same thing happened in the Korean Medical. Central Valley Hospital in California, they were attacked last June. They got in and impacted their critical systems. They were able to 100% recover by running off the roof platform and going through and doing their forensic analysis without ever paying a ransom to the, to the attackers. So numerous success stories here. Hopefully you can see the value that we can bring to you. We'd love to have the opportunity to introduce Rubrik to you and our solutions more in depth. But Thank you for tuning in. I'm happy to take some questions. And again, as we like to say at Rubrik, don't back up. We hope you go forward. Thanks, David. I'm just going to show you my screen and move on to the final part. So, um, there's a, there has been a question that come through and I'll get onto that in a second. Um, 
But as I covered at the start, um, there is a questions box on the right hand side. So if you do have any questions about anything that David discussed or anything kind of wider, then, then pop that question in and either myself or, or David will answer that for you. Um, what I would do before we want to say, before we move on to that, um, a bite, especially kind of my role in looking after that data management space, we, we do work with various, uh, and we do see various tools in the market around data management backup recovery. Um, but we don't see any tools that have this true immutable backup um, and that true confidence that you have a second copy of the data that is that is a secondary copy that cannot be targeted at the same time as your primary data. So when it comes to ransomware, when it comes to the security of your data, rubric are head and shoulders above everybody else in the market. And that's why they're seeing huge growth. And that's why things like Gartner have backed them at the, at the number one visionary in the market, because they're, they're evolutionizing uh, backup. <clears throat> so questions, let me just pop out the first one. So David, this is probably um, geared towards yourself more than me. Um, sure. Can you quantify the speed of recovery in terms of different workloads? For instance, how many VMs, for instance, can you recover at once? Sure, yeah. So the Rubrik platform is built on a uh, linear scale out model. Um, and so from a perspective of recovery, we have the ability to do near zero instant RPO and RTO recovery. Um, it comes down to the fact that we have the ability to live mount not only virtual machines, but application sets and databases off the Rubrik platform. And so time to recover is really as fast as you can boot or mount uh, a data set. Um, and the beauty there is that once the application is back and running, we will service it off the Rubrik platform and then we can lazy recover uh, behind the scenes, either doing storage remotion or database migration um, after the event is kind of over. And so for most customers, they look at it in terms of time to recover or that recovery time objective and we make it near zero. Um, speed is obviously going to be based on uh, the size of your Rubrik cluster. And so the cluster does scale appropriately based on your requirements. And as customers come on board with Rubrik, we have a sizing exercise that we do with, uh, with our customers and, and through our partners to help them understand the right size of that cluster. Uh, but you can expect you, you essentially uh, uh, that, that near zero RTO capability uh, for your critical applications and data set. Brilliant, thanks. Um, one more here. Uh, how does Rubrik prevent ingress of dormant ransomware entering the immutable backup and then being reintroduced during a restore? Yeah, great question. So a couple pieces to it. First off, remember our file system is append only by its design. So we back up a ransomware attack, it will only be in the session that we backed it up in. There's no way for it to impact previous sessions. And so depending on your retention cycle, we will have the ability to go back and kind of determine the last known point in time. Now for ransomware that has been embedded but hasn't been activated, this is where still you have a requirement to have a good incident forensics response program. But we have customers who will essentially leverage a digital or cyber, cyber range or sandbox, bringing on essentially a copy of their production environment running off a rubric to be able to go through and do that forensic level recovery to make sure that it comes back as a clean copy. And then again, for file level resolution or file level recovery, uh, the radar product I walked you through today will give you that granular capability of doing the last known good version of non-impacted data back to the previous point in time. So in this combination together, you can leverage the entire complete uh, recovery uh, work, workflow for uh, uh, life cycle uh, forensics. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so just looking, I can't see any other questions come in. If one pops up now, then I'll answer it. If not, we'll make sure we follow up to that individual with that question. So um, that kind of brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, but before we uh, finish, I have received a message from our marketing team uh, and I will now be announcing a winner of the Ring Smart Doorbell. So uh, congratulations to Duncan Arnold. Um, so somebody will be in touch to you to arrange arrangements for delivery of that. So congratulations. Um, and thank you everybody else for in 
for joining. David, thank you so much for your support. Um, amazing content, really relevant to today's market. And I really do hope that everybody found this as, as useful as I did. So thank you for joining. We look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Thanks for your time. And thank you again, yeah, David. Thank you. Appreciate it.